All right, welcome everyone to another Radio Free Cybertron review. I'm your host, Diecast, and this is a figure I'm really excited to bring the review to you. This is MP23 Exhaust, which is a homage to the 1980s Diaclone figure. Um, I'm not actually sure of his name, I believe, uh, but it was a it was a repaint. It was the Marlboro race car. Um, Marbor, I bl possibly was his name. I'm not a hundred percent sure, um, but a lot of controversy with this figure. First, what happened was it came out and it was a direct homage to the original which was, of course, a Marlboro race car. Um, now, Philip Morris did not like the design of the car because it was gear... You know, anything toy is not allowed to be associated with cigarettes because U.S. law and other laws say that you're gearing it towards kids and you're trying to promote smoking. So, Philip Morris sent out cease and desist letters or told everyone to not sell it. Takara Tomy then came back and changed the design, took the little, you know, the corners off the red up at the top, made the hood not as square as it should have been, uh, a couple other minor changes to try and appease Philip Morris. And after the that first revision, everyone thought everything was going to be okay. But then, apparently, Philip Morris was still not happy with the changes, and a lot of the stores are still not selling this. And some of the stores, um, even Hasbro Asia, canceled distribution of this figure, which is why there's no coins out there, because Hasbro Asia is the company that produces the coins, from what I understand. So since they canceled the product, there are absolutely zero coins for this masterpiece, which is the first masterpiece in a while uh, to not have a coin. But Japan was still able to uh, release this figure, so if you're lucky enough to find this figure in Japan or get it from a, a company that is from Japan, then you were able to get this figure. Uh, some of the Japan companies that are selling it now, unfortunately, have upped the price because they know how hard of a figure this is to get. I almost kind of wonder if uh, Takara Tomy didn't do a, as large as a production run as they normally would because they knew the Hasbro Asia was po possibly backing out of this figure. Or if they had extra figures, maybe they're repainting them in the slicer right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box real first, uh, real quick first. Of course, it's the Lancia Stratos Turbo uh, Destron Industrial Espionage, which I like. Exhaust, because there's definitely some espionage going on with this figure. On the side here, you have the uh, vehicle mode. On the top, you just get the MP23 exhaust. On the bottom, you get a whole bunch of Chinese writing and the official product license number from Lancia. On the side here you have a, a suave photo of him with his gun. This looks very nice. I do love the face on this guy. Uh, I also love the blue windshield and the blue... Um, I'm not even sure what you would call those. They're not really antenna, uh, but you know, the same piece on Wheeljack, I believe, is clear. But on this figure, it, the blue looks really nice. And, of course, it comes with uh, Wheeljack's immobilizer, which is nice that they throw that in this package if they couldn't give it to you in the Wheeljack package, as long as you can find him in store. Uh, and he also does come with some shoulder cannons also, which Wheeljack also had the holes for the for shoulder cannons, because of his own shoulder cannon. And once we get these open, we'll do a size comparison. Well, they're going to be the exact same size, but we'll show them off next to each other. So let's go ahead and get him out of package. Yeah. 
just making sure I pre-cut the right side. Put the box in the back. And of course, you have a really nice card. It is a little bit on the thin side, but the artwork on it is very nice. Real nice, cool pose for Marlboro, Marbor, which I believe was his actual name, Marbor, but they changed it uh, also due to copywriting. And then just his tech specs on the back, and some pretty good specs actually. So there's that. Chinese paperwork, or and you get his instructions sheet, which we'll just open that up real quick just to see if there's anything different. And shows the immobilizer here. And more transformations on the back. So nothing nothing special with the instructions. And then the final thing you have is the little baggie with the mirrors. And basically, you just have to open this up. It's nice that they give you two sets because these things are so small. And then just pop these off the sprue. And we'll open Wheeljack and put that on. So let's get him opened up and see what you have. And as you can see, you do have pieces. His immobilizer, which you have to put together. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Then you're just going to pop this blue piece down. Uh, let's see. actually have to look at the back of the box to see how this goes okay this little piece pops in right there this pops on top of the immobilizer and then the immobilizer just sits in this little stand pops in there so there's your immobilizer Nice accessory, nice to put next to your wheel jack. And you have his shoulder cannons, which he comes with two. Let's see. And his gun, which is the same gun that wheel jack comes with. And the shoulder cannons on these are definitely a lot shorter. And they do have a little ridge to pop. Oh, trying to put them in backwards. That's great for a camera. And they just pop all the way in. Just like so. And it does look like the shoulder cannons are actually a little bit different. Because this one has a hole right on the side. So I guess you could plug these in together if you wanted to I don't know but yeah you that's totally an option and we'll try that out when we get the figure undone and here you have Marbor or exhaust shot from the bottom side top Lancey on the front right there little green emblems nice it feels uh, all the paint feels really really smooth uh, even more than some of the other figures so they really did a nice job on the paint on this guy 
nice red wheels. Nice little red lights on the back. Side stream on the on the side of the uh, spoiler. Lancia on the top. Lancia just all over this car. Now I know a lot of uh, people are going to be making stickers for this. If you wanted to try and make it more uh, G1 representative, you will be able to do that. Uh, there is also still this hole up at the top for the gun port. So you can plug the guns in on the top. Just like so. Let's get this packaging out of the way. And like I said, we'll just pop the mirrors in real quick. To complete the masterpiece. Pop that back out. And this actually works better than on my wheel jack. On my wheel jack, uh, this little uh, peg slot would get stuck, but on this one it's popping right up on me, which is really nice. Really happy about that. So let's go ahead and get into the transformation on this guy. And just a word of caution, everything on this figure, at least on mine, is really, really tight. Um, even more so than wheel jack. Whatever the reason might that be, I don't think it's paint because a lot of the joints on this guy are not painted. So he just has some really uh, scary, not scary, but some really tight joints. And you can actually, through the transformation, you'll hear the joints kind of squeaking. So first thing you want to do, it'll pull out the feet a little bit that gives you access to get underneath the front of the hood loosen these bits the door panels from underneath the rocker and then these legs should slide out all as one assembly it's really not a great place to hold it you kinda gotta rock it back and forth and then once you do that legs are out you can split those you can also come around here to the back and we're just gonna take that whole waist piece swivel that down get that out of the way right away and then that waist piece clips in to the front of the windshield there now down to the legs all we have to do the same thing as on wheel jack and bring these feet around come back to this heel piece swing that around and you can see there's a white peg right there a little peg hole in that black plastic so you can sit this down same thing on this side fling that foot around and as you can see, you can hear the, the squeaking of the feet. So hopefully that translates over over the camera. But next thing is the doors, which end up on the back of the robot. We're going to do the same thing. Bring this little piece out. That's going to fill in part of the foot. Bring this down, and then it just pegs in right on the side there and that's a that's a tight peg too same thing on the other side flip that down rotate that around peg it in the hole and you kinda gotta squeeze it to get it all the way in even his hip joints and leg joints are all tight make sure the legs are all the way down that way he can bend 
90 degrees at the legs. And we're going to come back up to the top. We'll raise the camera up just a tad. Come back up to the top. lift this up his back window that gives us access to the arms actually before you do that come around to the back flip this exhaust piece down because that tabs in right there to his wings now we can come back flip these arms out just like so bring this back get that out of the way then these you can rotate up or pop up and then they rotate around now we have to get the head out of the way open up the head flip the head up close the chest back up didn't want to close. Close the chest back up. Bring the arms all the way around. If you're having a little clearance issue right here because the wheels are loose, if you just pull on the top of the wheel, pull that in a little bit, it'll help flip the flip the arm all the way through. And you're going to rotate this whole section around And you can see on the windshield right there, there's a little tab that goes into the arms, into the side of his chest. Just like so, and there's a little clip, a little peg, and a peg hole right on the back where his spoiler will plug into, or his back window, I should say. And we can extend these up, and now all you have to do is the arms. And these arms, you want to be really careful with because you can rub paint off if you don't, even if you do do it the right way. So, first thing, we're going to rotate this panel back, take the arm or the hand and pull that out, Then we need to rotate the arm around, that way it'll give him his elbow bend and then rotate the hand around. Same thing on the other side. And again, when you rotate the hand around, if you tilt the hand down just a little bit before you rotate this panel, it kind of gives you some extra clearance. Then rotate the arm around. Then you can straighten out the hand and rotate the hand all the way around. And there you have a uh, there you have Marbor or exhaust in his robot mode. And arms are really tight. You can see when I'm when I'm rotating that out. Doesn't seem like he's all perfectly plugged in. Um He's not. Oh yes, he is. He is. He is plugged in properly, but just the force of pulling his arms out is pulling him out down at the bottom of the waist. So just be careful that I guess till he loosens up. Definitely not a figure when a break. He will not be easy to replace. And another thing I just noticed is the nice blue, clear blue uh, grill openings in his feet and lights that match the rest of his body. Did a really nice job on him. And just to do a quick comparison, we'll bring him in with Wheeljack. Will Jack's a little dusty. Sorry. 
and you can see you can see the amount of differences on here and on the feet it looks like they used on wheel jack they used straight black plastic oh no that actually is clear too so it it does match up but wheel jack is definitely a lot eh, he's a little bit looser than what exhaust is as you can imagine they they do stand about the same height and on Wheeljack, I do have, if you're wondering where I got the blue ears, they are a non-F Productions, which I picked up at the Chosen Prime. So if you want to get uh, yourself some blue Wheeljack ears, you can go there. I believe he also, the Chosen Prime also has a Dr. Wu blue, um, blue ears for Wheeljack. But my Wheeljack... Or the non-F production ones, these are the glow-in-the-dark version, which is absolutely awesome. And I did do a review for them. I highly recommend picking that up. But that's enough with Wheeljack. Get him out of the way. Then the other thing I wanted to show with Exhaust, of course he can hold his shoulder cannons in his hands. But they do look a little small. very small and they do peg up top which looks really nice on him they can tilt up a little bit if you want and then of course he does have his gun which we showed off earlier which pegs into his hand as a lot of the masterpieces have now. So we'll just slot that in. And close up his hand. And to get it in on a face sculpt, just so you can see, really nice job really cool visor on him and unfortunately like I said if you want to pick this figure up I really don't know where to tell you to go other than eBay and from what I understand if you're going on eBay this thing this exhaust is running about uh, 150 to 200 dollars roughly so unfortunately this may not be an obtainable figure. Some people seem to think that these figures are made somewhere and eventually they're going to be filtered out to the public but I don't know it's possible to Karatomi cut down their production run because of this so or any additionals that they made that they didn't sell right away may be getting repainted in the slicer. Just a guess. So, there you have... Oh, let's do another size comparison real quick while we have him. Bring in some other mas another Masterpiece. Here he is with Masterpiece Optimus Prime, who apparently is coming apart. There he is with Prime. Ah. And when you realize Prime's out of frame. So, definitely a nice addition to your Masterpiece shelf. And I really like how the corner of the hood that, you know, the paint got cut on his leg really doesn't show in robot mode. So as far as robot mode goes, this is pretty close to the original design anyway. Except for the green here. There might be a couple other little minor differences that I don't even pay attention to. But the green is a solid block instead of the... Got a little triangle cut out at the bottom of it. So all in all, really nice figure. 
definitely recommend picking him up if you can get a hold of him. I don't know that I'd recommend him for 150 to $200. That's more Star Saber money. Uh, Star Saber should be in the mail, so hopefully should have that review up for you this week also. Got a ton of reviews coming up, so I'm really excited. I really want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in. And uh, if there's a figure you want me to review, just you know hit me up in the comments, and uh, I'll do my best to get that review up for you guys. All right, thanks for watching.